Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, let me start by thanking school's chancellor, Dennis Walcott, but particularly Sarah Scroggin, the principal. Sarah, there you are. I looked in the wrong place twice now. Uh, the principal here at East Bronx Academy for the Future, East Bronx Academy for the Future, or BAFF as it's called. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Principal Scroggin and the staff of BAFF for hosting us today. BAFF is one of our Innovation Stone schools, a group of 250 schools that are pioneering new individualized learning tools to help students excel. And we're here to announce a new measure that will help keep schools like BAFF on the cutting edge of education technology and keep the students on the path to success. And by any measure, more and more of New York City's public school students are on that path. I think it's fair to say our graduation rates are up by 41% since 2005. Uh, more students are taking and passing AP exams and more uh, graduating college ready. But of course, we can always do better. And we believe that all students have the capacity to excel and that it's up to us to find ways to tap into their individual strengths and to help them learn at a pace that works for them in a way that they respond to. Each uh, of us is different. Uh, that's true at uh, all our ages, particularly uh, maybe at the younger ages. And uh, we've got to find ways to reach out to each child because if they don't get a great education, their opportunities for the rest of their lives are really reduced. Uh, and it includes using this reach out. It includes using technology to interest and excite students and keep them moving forward. Uh, for example, teachers at our iZone schools use computer programs that monitor a student's progress and tailor daily lesson plans in real time. Uh, these programs allow teachers to provide more targeted help to those who need it, and they ensure that students who are excelling can move forward on new material at their own pace. And there's no, I remember my mother telling me, I asked why she graduated from high school so early, and she said because in those days, if you could do the work of the next year, they didn't waste a year of your life, they just jumped you over that year. And it was that kind of mentality of moving kids along at whatever pace made sense for them. And we've tried to do that with the ending social promotion, sort of in the other direction of kids who can't keep up. Don't push them faster than they can go, but make sure they eventually get to where they have to be if they're going to enjoy the great American dream. Uh, programs that allow teachers to provide more targeted health, help to those who need it and ensure that students are excelling uh, can move to new material. And there's no question technology will have a greater place in the classroom just like it does here at BAFF as the 21st century progresses. And we want the next great education technologies to come out of New York City. And I think there's every expectation to think they will. Our tech sector is booming. We're home to more and more of the world's most successful startups. And we're the center of the red hot apps economy. And what better place to channel that tremendous creative energy than in our public schools where it can help our students thrive. And so, in order to do that, today we're announcing a contest. Contests get the juices going and everybody's focus. Uh, this is a contest that will help us do that, and it's called the GAP App Challenge, G-A-P-A-P-P -P Challenge. And it's going to focus on closing the learning gap in one particular area, and that is in middle school math. And I'm going to explain how that contest is going to work in a moment. But first, let me say that we chose middle school math as a focus because it's a very important point in a child's education. Students who fall behind in middle school math are likely to remain behind through high school and less likely to graduate ready for college. Now, here's how the challenge will work. From now till April, through April, software developers can submit applications, games, or other programs that will help students succeed at middle school math. The apps can be used in or out of the classroom. They can be for students or they can be for teachers, things like better tools for analysis and communications. They can even be for parents and uh, maybe a tool to help them help with their kids with the homework. Now, these submissions will be judged in this competition by two panels. The first panel will be composed of public school principals and teachers. The second will be a panel combining DOE educators with tech experts, potential funders, and others. Their submissions will be judged on a number of criteria, including the originality of the idea, the overall user experience, the potential for a positive impact, and how feasible it would be to pilot in our schools. 
and before the end of the school year, we'll announce winners. There will be cash prizes for each winner, as well as for five honorable mentions. The total prize is available, uh, $50,000. Each winner will also receive $6,000 in web-based support services from their companies like, uh, companies like Amazon, our key supporter in this contest. And every submission, regardless of whether or not it wins a prize, will be considered for use in a school-based pilot. In June, we're announcing where and how the winning apps will be used. And in September, we'll begin piloting the best submissions in select iZone public schools. And funding for the cash prizes, you should know, comes from private donors. It's none of this is city money, it's private money. Uh, implementation and other expenses do come from a grant DOE received through the Federal Investing in Innovation Fund. And you can learn more about this challenge by visiting nyc.gov. Now, I think it's fair to say no other school uh, district in the nation has done a competition like this, and we think it's going to accomplish a th couple of things. It will hopefully provide us with a new set of software tools to help kids succeed. It will provide a chance for a tech startup to win a cash prize and potentially be part of a pilot program in the nation's largest school system. It will allow people working in the education technology sector to collaborate directly with educators and it will help them better tailor products to meet the needs of our students. And by piloting promising tools, we think we will get a better idea of what works for who and why. Now, the Gap App, Gap App Challenge will also help us establish a marketplace and a process for developing these idea, kind of ideas because we hope this contest will be just the first of many. The tech world, as you know, is on fire with game-changing ideas, and some of these ideas could make a real difference to students struggling to make progress, and we certainly owe it to them to try. And I want to thank some of the private funders who are supporting this challenge. Booth Ferris, the Anthony Meyer Family Foundation, the Blue Ridge Foundation, the Dilla von Furstenberg Family Foundation, the Carnegie Corporation of New York, and Amazon Web Services. And I also want to thank Cleaver, who is providing database support, and Socratic Labs and General Assembly, who are helping us reach out to the tech community. Uh, we're now going to hear a little bit more about this from our school's chancellor, Dennis Walcott. Dennis? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and good morning to all of you, and to be at a great school. Sarah and I were talking just a little while ago, and it was reminding me back, I guess around nine years ago, ten years ago, this building here used to be a former welfare center. And then we took it over and made it into a school, and they've been doing great work here. So I want to be a little innovative uh, with this particular portion of the press conference in that I'm going to cede my time for a couple of minutes to Sarah, because the iZone roughly has 190,000 students who are participating in, I guess, around 250 schools, and larger than the city of Philadelphia, and they're doing so many creative things. And at this school, we have a fantastic principal who is doing a lot of innovative work for our students. So Sarah, do you want to just take one second to tell folks a couple of seconds what you're doing here. Thank you, Chancellor Walcott. Just like Chancellor Walcott ceded to me, I have to actually confess that I ceded my time to the teachers because when I heard this was happening this morning, um, I asked them to talk a little bit about what the iZone had meant to them. And they talked in particular about kids really looking at their mastery and where they are now and where they need to be. They also talked about the fact that technology and the the participation of the tech community is essential. This work is really hard. You probably saw, and you heard the mayor speak about the American dream, you probably saw our community when you arrived this morning. This work is really hard. We need the private sector to partner with the public sector in this work and to find solutions for the learning needs of our children. So thank you. You're done, you wanna go back? No, 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 I'm no, no, being innovative today. <laughs> you said it all. Well, that's good. Uh, now let me turn the floor over to our chief the city's chief digital officer, Rachel Hout. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I'm just going to, um, oh, thank you so much. That's um, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting to be here. Um, the Gap App Challenge is really a positive and powerful step forward in the mayor's digital roadmap for New York City, the plan to realize New York City's digital potential. And I'll just speak on a few of those key points about why it is so incredibly important. Um, it really touches on several elements of the roadmap, including access, education, innovation, and industry. 
first access because the iZone program, which is extremely groundbreaking, is connecting more young people to technology and to the internet than ever before. And of course, this is the foundation of a fully digital city. Second, education. By supporting mathematics education, we're supporting STEM, and that is a building block of engineering knowledge, and that is truly the engine behind a truly digital city and a digital ecosystem. Third, innovation in government, which has also been a hallmark of this administration. It is absolutely crucial to continue to use the best and most effective technology tools to continue to, the, to evolve the way that we serve New Yorkers, and this is just another great step forward. And finally, the partners in that conquest and the partners in that effort, which are New York City's um, thriving tech sector. And already, New York City today is a leader in the education tech space, and we are going to continue to lead. And this is another way to further support all of the great innovators and entrepreneurs here in New York City. So thank you so much. It's an honor to be here for the launch of the Gap App Challenge, and I think we're all very excited to see what comes out of it. Thanks. Uh, Rachel, thank you. We're also joined this morning by Dwayne Bray of IDEO, I-D-E-O, a consulting firm that helped us design this challenge. Dwayne. Thank you and good morning, everyone. I'm here with a few of my colleagues and just want to say that we're really excited to be partnering with the DOE and iZone on this effort. Um, I think these sort of public-private partnerships like this one have the potential to have um, tremendous impact. We're a design and innovation firm, um, and a lot of the, the strategies and the methods that we've been using in the private sector for years are things that we brought into this effort. Um, this is one of our first collaborations with the city, and it's exciting to see the DOE as a trailblazer and thinking about how do you start to bring these kind of new solutions to critical um, and chronic problems. Our work with the DOE is focused on the first part of this initiative, which is how do we start to identify learning challenges that are happening in the classroom? And more importantly, how do we inspire others to start to create solutions that we can bring into the classroom? Um, a big part of our process involves spending time actually in the classrooms with teachers and students. I'd like to thank the principals and teachers who opened their doors to us because that had a profound impact on our ability to identify the learning solution. We got to see on a daily basis um, some of the the innovations that teachers themselves are bringing um, to learning challenges, some of the things that they're kind of facing and contending with on a daily basis, um, not only to sort of listen to their ideas and concerns, but also to kind of witness the types of solutions, whether they're tried and true methods or um, new innovations that they've been experimenting with. To explore what a learning challenge might look like, as the mayor said, we focused on middle school math, not just because it's a critical time for skill development, but also for personal development. Students who are falling behind come into the classroom with a few different needs. Um, some of them might lack some of the basic skills um, that they would have been bringing with them from elementary school. Some might lack literacy skills. For example, they may not be able to pull the math out of a word problem. And some have a hard time just identifying the, um, the sort of relevance to what they're learning to their daily lives. Um, but we've seen teachers come up with some really creative solutions to address these gaps. For example, maybe they take um, a math problem and translate it to a New York City context to motivate kids to learn more. Maybe they come up with experimental ways for kids with different skill sets to work together to solve problems. But we also know that teachers are under tremendous time pressures, which make it hard to give visibility to some of these solutions or to collaborate as much as, as, much as they would like to. We're hoping that this design challenge helps to address some of those gaps. And in particular, we're excited to see what happens as developers start to bring solutions into the schools. It's not just an opportunity to drop solutions into the classroom, but actually to bring early prototypes in that can be improved by direct collaboration with teachers and students in the classroom every day. Thank you. Uh, Dwayne, thank you. And uh, before taking questions, let me just try to uh, summarize for Spanish-speaking New Yorkers. Estamos anunciando un nuevo concurso para desarrollar un programa informático uh, para ayudar a los estudiantes de secundaria según uh, seguir adelante en matemáticas. Uh, los ganadores recibirán uh, recibirán uh, un premio mont uh, monetario y la oportunidad de crear un programa piloto para la zona de innovación uh, y en algunas escuelas para más informaciones visite el nyc.gov and with that I'll be happy to take some questions